everybody. This is Alan Peterson with Meet the Thriller Author. And in today's uh, podcast, I'm interviewing uh, James Sumner, who uh, writes the Adrian Hell thrillers. And so I'm excited to have him on the show. Uh, hi, James. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, Alan, for uh, inviting me onto your show. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. Before we get uh, down to the questions, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, of course, yeah. I live in the north of England, which is bigly cold and wet and grey, and that's just in the summer, frankly. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm married, I have a lovely living, but I'm also uh, work full-time as well, so I fit my writing in around my full-time work. Well, that's pretty impressive, because you have uh, several uh, titles out, and so you're doing that uh, kind of like uh, while having a, another full-time job. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, I've split split my time between both things. I try and uh, I try and sneak in an hour on my lunch while I'm at work, um, and I have have a nice little office space at home as well. So, get any spare time in the evening. That's it's what I do. Uh, can you describe your books to someone who hasn't read any of the, any of them yet? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the Age in Hell series is um, I, I went for very fast paced action, um, edgy seat thrills very dialogue based uh, humor where you probably wouldn't necessarily look for humor um, in situations basically it's they're just pure escapism I don't want people to read my books and to think all that much I want them to forget about everything else and just enjoy the ride oh, that's good so you start providing some great entertainment I, I, I like that I like that style <laughs> yeah and so why did you start writing thrillers I've always been a fan of the genre it's always something I have enjoyed reading so when I got to the stage where I wanted to start writing. It was the job that I was most comfortable sort of dealing with because it was what I'd had most access to sort of growing up and, and through my reading. And I felt I could, I had something to offer that genre and the people who like it. So. And how long have you been writing for? Coming up to just over two and a half years now, all told. It's it's gone very quickly as well. It's uh, It doesn't seem two minutes ago that I was a guy sat with an empty Word document not and clue what to do and and here we are a couple of years later and as you say i have six titles out so it's it's been a great ride so far yeah you have uh, five books out so far right that's right yeah there's there's uh four in the agent health series i also did a spin-off series uh based on the global tech industries oh. uh which does feature in adrian's in adrian's series as well but that's got one title so far in the series and of course got the Phaedron Hell book due out in a few weeks, so... Busy time. Very busy, yeah. <laughs> so what are some of your favourite thriller authors, and did they influence your writing style when you, when you started to write? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, what, writing this sort of genre, you have, to, you have to tip your hat to people like Lee Child, who very much brought the genre to the forefront and, and showed the world how to do it properly, and, um, I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of his work, definitely, and... But he was part of the inspiration, I suppose, seeing what he'd done, the characters that he built, and obviously the following that came with that. That's very much something that I wanted to I want to try and emulate. And there's people like Vince Flynn, who obviously his main protagonist is probably more similar to mine um, than the Jack Reacher character in that he's a, an assassin and things. So, yeah, there's definitely the, the influences there. But I, I've always, I always thought I could put my own twist on the things that they do and obviously make it my own and hopefully carve out my own place in the market for it. Is the series, is it set in, is it set in the UK or is it in the US? Uh, oh, so it's set in the US. Um, it was, it was a decision I made. I, I was looking at it from a business point of view when I first started out and you look at Amazon and they have 15, 20 million people, 20 million eBooks. The UK have five or 6 million, which is no, nothing to sneeze at. But I want it to appeal to the biggest possible audience. So it's an American thriller. It's set in America. Um, the main protagonist is, is American, but his best friend is British. I wanted to, I wanted to use that partnership and have, have the lang- not the language barrier as such, but have the, the difference in dialogue and the difference in culture there just to kind of imprint myself on it a little bit. Do you find it uh, difficult to uh, write uh, with American English? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was something. It, it did take my head around, certainly. Uh, um, and the first few drafts of uh, my first book I had uh, had people uh, in car parks and walking on the pavement as opposed to parking lots and sidewalks. So it was. Um, <laughs> there you go. You got it down now. Well, that's, I've, I've I've got a good idea of it. Yeah, I think there's still certain things. That, Th- things like that that's sort of a direct translation I think you can learn but I, th- I, I think there's probably things 
uh, like local like colloquialisms for Americans that unless you're American, you're never going to know the exact way to say something or the exact sort of phrase to use. So thankfully, I do have a very good editor um, who picks up on most things that I've left in that are a bit too British. But um, but yeah, it's a challenge. And I must admit, I find myself using Zs instead of Ss now in, when I write things in English. And <laughs> I do get confused sometimes. <laughs> and so now what, what actually inspired you to write your first your first book? Like what was the... What said I'm gonna give this a shot. I was reading. I, it was actually it was on the honeymoon um, a couple of years ago, and I was reading a book called Lethal People by John Locke, uh, which is part oh, yeah. of his Donovan Creed series. Absolutely brilliant. The sort of short, um, hard hitting books. Uh, our, our sort of genre, and I, I really enjoyed it. And um, I, I went online to sort of buy the next one, and I, I looked into who John Locke was because I'd never heard of him. And it turned out he was the first self-published author to sell a million books on Amazon. And I was, re- and I've always, I've always wanted to write, but I think I was either too young or too didn't have the focus to to really make something of it. But when I, after reading that book and after looking into him, I thought, well, he's done that on his own, and it was a really good book. But I thought I could do that. I'm not saying I could do it better than him, but I could certainly do it. And if he can do it and be successful, then why can't I? And that was where that was what really opened my eyes to, to to the independent publishing world and knowing that there isn't just the only option of going through an agent and trying to get a publishing deal and having those as the gatekeepers there. Amazon was opening up this huge world to people that they could they could publish their work and share it. And knowing that that opportunity was there, I think that's what acted as a catalyst for me. And literally within two hours of reading who he was i'd written a couple of thousand words of my first book and the rest is history oh, that's awesome that's a very inspirational uh way of uh, getting getting things rocking so you started straight with indie you didn't even try to query or get an agent or any of that no stuff. nothing like that I, I mean i was i was very new i didn't know anything about the business or even the craft of writing i didn't know it was a craft i just thought you you know you write down what you want to say and and there you go and it was only i th- I've actually found that the more time I spend writing, the harder it gets because you learn so much more for the craft. It's it's you know trying to perfect it. it it's it's difficult to do, but it's very enjoyable. And I just I just kind of went along with it, and it was only sort of two or three books into my writing career that I realised that yeah, there are ways that you can look for agents and things like that, but. I must admit, I've, I'm sure we all have as independents. We've tried the agent route at some point, but I've, unfortunately at this stage, I've never had any success with it, but I've done all right on my own, so I'm not beating myself up too much. Yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah, I, I, When I got started, it was the same thing too. I never even bothered looking for an agent or querying or anything. I just uh, <laughs> kind of went the same route as yeah. you did. Um, so where do you usually get your ideas for your books? Um, I think I tend to start from the ground up. I don't plan an awful lot I find that planning tends not to work and I I could write 6,000 words of a plan for a book and after the first paragraph I'm doing something completely different um, so for in, in terms of the ideas of the plots I tend to start with the character I start with Adrian Hell and I look at what he's doing and I look at I put myself in his shoes and think well organically realistically what would happen next Oh, he would go here. Okay, so we'll go there and we'll see what could happen there. And I just try, I, I build things up from the ground and I see if they work. And if they do, then great, I roll with it. If they don't, then I scrap it and I start again. And I, I just keep playing with different ideas until something sticks. And do you find that like television and pop culture, do they influence your writing and your novels? Um, yeah, to, to an extent. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, in the spare time I get, I like to sit and, you know, you, you blast through Netflix with, with the wife and things. And there are certain TV shows that I'm a fan of, um, like uh, Strike Back and I think Banshee as well is another one. Um, I think they're on Cinemax, actually, in, in the US. And shows like that do really influence my work because it's if my books were a TV show, they would be those shows. It's that kind of style, the rough around the edges, the... They're character driven, but they don't let up for a second. You know, they, it's just non-stop balls to the wall, action and action and thrills, and that's what I wanted from my books. So it's very much, you know, I take aspects of them and and see if I can apply it to my work. 
Yeah, I've, uh, I've enjoyed Strike Back. I haven't seen Banshee. I've seen the commercials, but I haven't. It's it's really good. It's definitely not a family show, but <laughs> but yeah, Strike Back's one of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites. It's a shame they cancelled it actually. Oh, they did. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Huh. Um, and so, what are some of your favorite books? You mentioned Lee Child was a, a yeah. So an influence Lee, for you. Lee Child's my. Uh, it's not. I won't say it's a guilty pleasure, but the very very first Jack Reacher book, Killing Floor. Um, it's probably even now one of my favourite books, and I think it's the best one he's ever done. Um, I've read all twenty of his uh, of his Jack Reacher series, and Killing Floor for me is is one of the best ones. It's it's such a good book, and written in the first person as well, similar to mine. Which is, I know a lot of his tend to be the more um, traditional third person, but that one, I don't know if it's because it appeals to me and my style, but it's always been my go-to book. I must have read it. 15, 20 times. Oh, well, yeah, that's a great book. <laughs> are any of your novels, are they based like on real-life experiences that you've had or on real-life adventures? Um, <laughs> I hope not. I'm, uh, they're about an assassin, so... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you might want to might confess Yeah, <laughs> no, it's... Um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you, you see things like... I mean, I, I commute to work in the morning, and when you're sitting on the train, you you know, you people watch and you see everyone coming and going, people can walk onto the onto the train and you think, Oh, he looks like a he looks like a butcher or something or he looks like a, a doctor or something like that and you you always sort of look at people and you conjure up your own impressions. Sometimes I think that that will then inspire me for a character in my book or a situation or something like that. So there's always the inspiration there, but I try not to take anything too directly from real life. Um, because you never know who's going to read my books. I might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like, have you read that book, The Girl in the Tra- on the Train? Uh, I haven't actually, but I must confess that is on my to-read list on my Kindle, so I will get to it. But Yeah, it's pretty good. That reminds me of, that's kind of like part of the plot of she's in the UK on a train and <laughs> with people watching. <laughs> Um, so, are there any similarities then? Um, well, I know they're being an assassin and all, but like some of your personality traits, do they make it into into Adrian Hell at all? Um, probably, yeah. I mean, he's he's got my sense of humor. I think. Um, I, I think. I think. I, I don't know if every author's the same, but I look at Adrian Hell as kind of the person that I would be in an action film. If 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 that was me, that's that's what I would want to be like. It's it's like my personality with the volume turned all the way up. Um I would never do or say or act the way that he does, but there are times when I would like to and I think it's kind of it's a good way I think authors have that benefit over people who don't who don't have a creative outlet in that I can have a bad day at work and think, oh, God, I just want to shoot that person for annoying me. I can go and write a book and Adrian can shoot someone and have the inspiration or something like that, you know, and he can approach the situation in a way that maybe I would. And, yeah, I think he's very much my outlet. Yeah, same here. It's like it's like, it's like therapy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the challenges that you encounter when you start uh, writing, when you're bringing your, your stories to life? I suppose the main one is... It's, it's the location uh, for, for the Adrian books. Now, f- for the majority of them, I tend to use real real places, real locations. Funnily enough, I my second book, Hunter's Games, is set in San Francisco. Yeah, I saw, I saw the Golden Gate Bridge in there. I'm going to yeah, read that one. It's, um, and obviously, the hard part for me being in the UK is I don't have real-world experience of these locations, so I spend a lot of time um, on Google Maps and familiarize myself with the terrain, the streets, so that when I write it, even though obviously his escapades aren't necessarily the most realistic in the world, but where he is, is accurate. And I I like to ensure that because I, I like to think that somewhere in the world, so there's going to be somebody in San Francisco reading this book going, hey, I'm on that street. Brilliant. And it adds, it will add to the experience for the reader. And I work very hard to try and make make that as 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 realistic as possible so yeah I, I live on google maps for weeks at a time when i <laughs> when i start a new book yeah i was gonna ask you about that one too and then i, I also like going to youtube because there's always videos of people driving in those t- in different towns yeah that's right so, so you, you know uh, if there's yeah. a, a stoplight somewhere or a left yeah. Turn, yeah. <laughs> yeah well it sounds like the weather our weather here in san francisco is the same as yours uh, yeah. <laughs> foggy and I was rainy gonna say, yeah you're having the uh you're having a bit of bad weather at the moment there 
Yeah, exactly. It's been raining. Uh, it's been raining all day. So, <laughs> well, in, in the UK, it's been raining for about thirty-two years. So, uh, <laughs> you've got a long way. Uh, to I go. won't complain then. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I, I guess I can't complain. Uh, where do you usually write? I, I I like to have a little bit of structure in that I at home I have a desk. Um, I have my own little corner of the house that is nobody else's except mine. So I can just I can just sit down. I can shut off. And I can I can blast through a book. Um, although I must admit, the majority of my work at the moment is done at my full time job. Um, in my lunch hour, my phone gets turned off, and I sit and I do as much as I can because that's the bulk of my time. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got my own little office space at home, and hopefully, as uh, as time goes on, I'll get to spend more time here and, and less time working for somebody else. Do you write? Have you ever like written on the train? I don't know how long your commute is. But. Um, I, I I don't do any physical writing, but I have um, I do tend to make a lot of notes. I suppose as I go along, I have a an app on my phone which is like post-it notes, and if if something comes to me, I can be sat on the train reading the, reading the newspaper, and I will suddenly go, oh my god, you know, th- I can do this for the next chapter of my book, and I will sit there and I'll text myself the uh, the next chapter all the notes and then I can copy them down when I get in front of a computer um, but I, my my core writing is done at a desk in front of a computer sort of away from the rest of the world do you use a word doc or a, another writing um, I, I use Microsoft Word yeah I'm, uh, I'm I'm pretty old school in that respect I know I, I know a lot of people use Scribe I must admit I've I tried that and I didn't have the time to figure out how to use it effectively, so I just never bothered. So I'm sure there were better ways of doing it, but MS Word works for me. Whatever, whatever works for you, because yeah, there's a was it George R. R. Martin uses an old DOS computer to write his book. Well, so <laughs> I say it worked, that works for him. I think he might get one of those. He's done all right, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> And so, uh, so can you describe a little bit uh, about your writing process? You said you don't you don't outline or plot very much. You just kind of no, I, I I just kind of roll with it really. Um, I I have a rough idea where the character's going to end because I I try and plan. The only plan I do is I plan the basic stories sort of two or three books in advance. So, for example, I'm about to release the fifth Adrian Hell book, but I know what's going to happen two or three books down the line. So because I know where he's going to go. It gives me a little bit of guidance as to how he's going to get there, and obviously that journey from point A to point B is the bulk of the book. So I just kind of let it—I don't know—it kind of writes itself. I know it sounds cliched, but I just kind of let it happen. And if something works, I'll stop, go back to where it started working again, and and redo it. But I—I don't like being too linear in in my approach to writing the books. I like to just let it all happen. And now that you're writing a, a two series, right? Because you you, ha- you spun out that uh, Globetech. I've Tech. got the Globetech series. Yeah, that's uh, there's one book out. I've got another one in the wings as well. So how's that? How's that working for you? Working on two series? Do you like work on one first and then the other, or you go back and well, forth? Well, it's tricky because I'm 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 not very organised. Out, outside of my mind, I am very organised. Everything has a pile. Everything's filed correctly. But inside my mind, it's like a tornado of just chaos and words and I tend to sort of flip from one thing to the other when the moment takes me um, I made it a little bit easier on myself because I made the Globotech series intertwined with Adrian Hell so the first Globotech book actually serves as as a bridge between the fourth and fifth Adrian books so because they're all related it's not it, it's kind of natural to go from one to the other to the other instead of having to try and do two completely separate projects at the same time they're linked so it, it doesn't feel like i'm working on two series as such which does make it a lot easier and uh, what is your uh, so your, your your work your writing day when you're when you sit down to write so you're you just kind of zeroing in and do, do you like just like unplug and just like focus on that yeah so i'm, I'm, I'm as i say i've been doing this for sort of two and a half years and it's only been the last sort of six six to nine months where i've started to look at it more of a business as opposed to just me being an author, because being independent, you have to do everything yourself. And if there's nobody looking for my books, then it doesn't matter what I write, no one's going to see it and it won't make any money. So what I try and do, I've tried to sort of get a structure for myself so that in the morning, um, sort of before lunchtime, that is when my mind works 
the best. So that's when I try and do all my writing. Um, I'll I'll just blast. I have this um, like a, a CD of just nature sounds, like just a storm, just playing constantly, and I can put that on and the entire world fades away and it's just me and the page and I can get two hours of solid writing done and I'm happy with that for the day so then after lunch I can look at the business side of things the social media the marketing all the boring stuff that I have to do because I want to do the stuff that I do in the morning you know yeah as do, do you write every day I try to yeah um I try and treat it I try and treat it like a job um as I say I work a lot better with with structure so um I try and make sure that I do around 1500 words a day monday to friday and i class that as as you know an achievement i've done what i need to do for that week and then the weekends are my own because if i did this for a living that's what i would do so i try and i try and treat it as as if i'm doing it every day as a career and what keeps you going on the on the writing side the writing side is have you ever heard the phrase of for the first draft calling it a vomit draft where you just have to spew it out onto yep. the page. Well, there's, I can't empty my mind, and it's really, really frustrating because I'm a very impatient person, and it takes time to get it out as much as you know. You can just spew it out there and tidy it up later. I, I've never once been able to empty my mind in two and a half years of trying, and, and it's brilliant, and it's the best feeling in the world, and I don't want to not do that. So... I never. I've, thankfully, I've never got to a point yet where I have struggled for motivation to to write, um, and long may that continue. As a reader, do you still find time to read, or um, not as much as I used to? And I've I've tried reading different things. I found I tried reading a couple of thrillers after I started writing them, and I didn't enjoy them as much because I looked at them professionally. I didn't read them to enjoy them. I was reading them thinking, oh, I wouldn't have done that there, or, you know, oh, that's a good idea, yeah. I'll pinch that idea, you know, and it, it took a bit of the enjoyment out of it. So when I do read, it tends to be something completely off, you know, off the scale, no, nothing that I would I would, write, I would would read or write myself normally. And now you said that uh, you uh, put it on the marketing side, you're on social media and all that, do you get a lot of interaction with your readers and your fans? Um, like on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, so I I run my Facebook page is, has picked up a bit of steam. I've got I've got about 360 people um, that like it, and that that's really picked up over the last sort of few few months for me, and that's great because I like regular small regular interaction. I like to just put on the post and say, "Hey guys, how's your evening going?" I'm sat writing, my dog's asleep behind me, that kind of thing, just to make myself appear human to them and. I get so much good feedback from them. It's it's really satisfying, um, and there's, I've got a nice little community there of uh, of readers. It's it's really good. I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it seems like you're really getting an outreach because I was reading on your bio that uh, True Conviction has been downloaded over a hundred thousand times. That's awesome. yeah, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> I, I must admit, I can thank Bookbub for that because I was very fortunate to be accepted for one of their uh, for one of their promotions back in July last year, and and they really did. I mean, a lot of people say, like, you know, they're hard to get, but they'll change your life if you get them. And it's like, they're not kidding. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's up to about 115,000 now, but that's not bad for 12 months. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, that's amazing. And how many books did you have out at that, when you, when you that book book? Um, uh, I'd, I'd released the fourth Adrian Hell book in the May, and then I got that promotion in the July. So mm, nice. it did, yeah, it did really well. I had a lot of... I had quite a high sell through for a couple of months after that as well, which which obviously really helps. It was the royalties were quite nice, but uh, but yeah, but again that that spurs you on because all of a sudden you got I think in that six week period after the book bub ad, my mailing list doubled in size. It went from two thousand to four thousand in six weeks, and all of a sudden I had this frankly massive audience and I was like I don't know what to do with you, <laughs> so I, I just kind of say hello and they're like when's the next book coming out, um. Yeah, about that. Let me let me just go and write that book for you. You've all come along at once, and I wasn't expecting it. But uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, I'll get back to yeah, you. <laughs> it's really good. But like I say, a, a lot. I mean, even all these new readers, they they're very interactive. They're very um, they care, which is which is great. I've, I've got all these people who actually support and care about what I do, and it's it's such a great feeling. I never expected to get anything like that, and it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work? What you're working on right now? Um, yeah, so 
I'm actually doing something completely different. Uh, I fancied a, a bit of a change creatively. Um, I've done Age in Hell for almost three years now, and because of the style that he is, that it's first person, it's present tense, it's very quick. Um, but that kind of style, whilst it has its benefits, it has its limitations as well. And as I'm growing as an author, I I want to kind of spread my wings a bit. So uh, to be quite honest, I, I went on Amazon and I looked, I spent a good few hours looking for a gap in the market in terms of a genre that was big, but has kind of dried up. And I picked one and I started writing in it. So at the moment, I'm working on a, a young adult fantasy adventure series um it's a planned trilogy it's very much in the vein of the city of instruments series um like your rick reardon your harry potter that kind of thing um obviously it's very different i've not shot anybody yet in the book i've not <laughs> swore um, it's, it's there's no blood it's quite boring frankly but uh, but no it's it's really good i'm really enjoying the the difference in style the difference in pace obviously it's aimed it's aimed at a much younger audience. I think I, I wanted something my, my son could read. He's 11 years old and he's never read one of my books, but he's my biggest advertising mouthpiece because he <laughs> brags to everyone. So oh, my, my dad's a, a best-selling author. All oh, right, is, are his books good? I have no idea. Um, so <laughs> so he's, he's actually reading it as I'm writing it a couple of chapters at a time. Um, and, oh, that's awesome. So you're still your uh, beta yeah, reader. Exactly, yeah. And he's, uh, he's actually picked up on a couple of spelling mistakes as well, which... Which is quite embarrassing, <laughs> frankly. But um, but no, he's he's, he's you, enjoying it. You, you tell him you did it on purpose. He's yeah, I was just him. Him. yeah, it's part of his homework. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, he's he's enjoying the book, and I'm enjoying writing it. So at, at the moment, that's what I'm that's what I'm working on. And are you gonna publish it on, uh, with your with your name with your name, or are you gonna use a pen name? Um, no. So he's well to be. I'll, let you in on a, a trade secret. James Sumner is actually my pen name. Um, it's my it's my secret identity. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I I thought about that because I thought I've been I've got to the point in the process of writing it where I'm starting to look at the end game now when it's how I'm going to market it, what the cover's going to look like, that kind of thing, and I realised that I don't actually have an audience for this because I'm pretty sure. Apart from the sort of the core following that will literally read anything that I write, a lot of my fans are casual readers, which is fine. But if they're casual readers of the thriller genre, they're not going to like the next Harry Potter, I wouldn't have thought. I don't know how I'm going to approach that, but I'm probably going to have to try and, and build a new audience for it at some point. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my name uh, for it, I think. Um, I'm probably going to publish it myself and just see how it goes. Are you a fan of the police and Sting? <laughs> uh, um, I, I don't want to make anyone feel old, but they're a little bit before my time. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. No, you, you just made me feel real old. Thank Sorry. you very much. <laughs> Fields of, is it uh, Fields of Gold by Sting? That that was one of my favorite songs growing up. But I think that was after he left the police, wasn't it? Well, I just was thinking that his real name is Gordon Sumner, so I thought maybe you were, uh, that's what you got the Sumner. That's right. Well, to be quite honest, um, I did it because James was my father's name. Um, he he passed away a few years ago, um, so I wanted James as as the first name because it was a tribute to my dad. Um, and Sumner is my mother's maiden name, so it's a, a tribute to my family more than anything. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah it's, that's awesome. It's one of those things. I thought, well, if I'm going to go by another name, I want the other name to mean something. You know, Clark mm-hmm. Kent goes by Superman. I go by James P. Sumner. So <laughs> yeah, that makes that, that makes total sense. And so, when's this? New, no, what's your new, uh, the new series coming out? I've not got a date on it yet. I'm probably about halfway through uh, the first draft, so I'm hoping to have that finished uh, by sort of mid-March, maybe, um, depending how the wind blows. It also depends on how well the new Adrian Hell book does. Um, I may find that I get inspiration for something Adrian-related or Globotech-related that I feel needs... To Excuse me. Needs to take precedence, um, so we'll see. But it'll be nice to get that out by the, by kind of June July time. I think that that would be a nice time. Yeah. And when's the uh, next uh, Adrian Hell coming out? Oh well, you see, this that's a difficult question to answer because the fifth book is the fifth book is being published by Kindle Scout. It actually won the Kindle Scout competition. Um, so. Oh. Uh, Kindle Press are actually publishing that for me, which is brilliant. Obviously, very exciting time. The possibilities are are endless with that one. Um, yeah, that's ex- that's exciting. Yeah, it was really good. It's a very nerve wracking thirty days when 
you're just trying to <laughs> gather nominations and you're just watching your figures tick along and you're wondering how everyone else is doing. You want everyone to do okay, but at the same time, you don't want them to do as well as you. You know, it's always that yeah. that little bit of selfishness. Um, so that's very much in, in Amazon's hands, and I'm hoping that will come out um, early February. I think. Um, but in terms of what comes after that, that's uh, that's going to be a bit of a, a, a tight kept secret at the moment because I don't want to ruin the fifth book for anyone. So. Um, so now you're and your website for uh, the listeners to find you. Uh, your main site is like is. Uh... Yeah, so the main website is uh, jamespsumner.com. I've I've tried to make it as accessible as possible, so it's got links to uh, the Facebook, the Twitter, the my blog, um, even my Author Central page. It's these ways to email me. Um, it's got all the information about myself and my books on there, uh, and it, it's proven quite popular. I put one of those um, counters on. So you can see how many people have gone onto your website and have have had just over sixteen thousand hits in about twelve months. So I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. I don't know if that's good or not, but yeah. for someone who doesn't actively market themselves, that's not bad. Yeah, and I, I just noticed I was looking at your website that you're offering a, a one of your sh- a short story for people who join your mailing list. That's pr- yeah, that's awesome. right. So um, that's I, I don't know if you've uh, heard of a guy called Nick Stevenson. Um, he's yeah, yeah I, I, I think most independent authors have. But he's yeah, the reader magnet. Exactly. Magnets. Yeah, he's uh, he, that. I mean, that guy's changed my life, frankly. Yeah. Um, March last year, I had no sales. I had nothing. I didn't even know what a mailing list was. Um, and less than twelve months later, I've had two bestsellers. Um, so I can't take all the credit. He his his methods have worked, and uh, and yeah. So my my magnet, my my hook to get people signed up is um, an Adrian Hell short story um, set many years before his series starts. Just him as a as a reckless teenager, sort of. You see how the how we, why he is the way he is. I thought it'd be interesting to to share that with people. So yeah, all right. So um, and I'll have links to all that on for the listeners on the on the website and and everything. So if, if you don't remember, you can go there and find it. Before I let you go, do, is, is there anything else that you'd like to tell our listeners? I suppose just I just a massive thank you um, to fans of uh, obviously of both my work, uh, the Agent Hell series, but also of the genre as well. It's supporting it and just giving people, and especially independent authors, just giving us a try um, and supporting our work. It's we. It sounds cliche to say, but you know we we do what we do to entertain people, and if people are entertained and they show their appreciation, it's it makes it all worthwhile. So, so thanks for supporting me, and if you haven't checked out true conviction yet it's free so just give it a try you might like it all right james well thank you very much for uh for being on the show and it's been nice chatting with you yeah thank you very much alan it's been an absolute pleasure thank you thank you for listening to this episode of meet the thriller author you can visit our site at get.thrillingreads.com forward slash podcast for more information on our podcasts and you can also subscribe to this podcast uh, on your favorite podcatcher like itunes the most popular one of course uh, just search for meet the thriller author and you'll find me there and i'm also on facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash meet thriller author love to hear from you love to hear comments and your feedbacks on the shows and i'll have a new podcast a new interview with a thriller author uh, they'll be posting them every tuesday so stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe and please visit my author website at ellenpeterson.com